In this lesson, we're going to be going over the 3D printing toolbox add-on. So let's get started by reducing this view from 4 to 1. So to do that, let's collapse these. I'm just going to click in this bottom corner and click and slide down. And that will collapse this one. And I'll do the same thing here the other way. Just click in the corner, slide up. And from here, click in the middle here and go to the right. And now we have one view. Let's bring back our tools with the T key and the in for information. On the information pop-out, there should be a 3D printing tab. So for the toolbox, what you get, you get some statistics. So you can get the volume or the area of this. How much plastic would it take? How much plastic are we talking for the volume? So you get a measurement down here. So that'll help when you're trying to get some online quotes for maybe a 3D printing manufacturer. That'll give you some, some measurements. Next, you have checks. So these are the ones we're going to be using the most. And that is your solid. So notice when I clicked solid, we get some information out down here. And it's saying that there are 42 non-manifold edges. And what that means is we got some holes in here. So click on that button. And Blender will highlight the edges that are in question. So it's kind of hard to see. So let me show you a trick. If you hit Shift H, that will hide anything that's not selected. It looks like we have some holes maybe in the skull, maybe in the eyeball. So thank you, Blender 3D Printing Toolkit. Now we know. So let's just bring everything back. And to do that, you can do Alt-H, and that will unhide everything. And next, we have intersections. So go ahead and click on intersections. And now, holy bajoizles, we've got 57 intersecting faces. So let's click that. And there they are. They are intersecting somehow some you can kind of see it down here that's poking out there's like an eyeball poking out here if I hit shift H now we can really see okay yep we've got some definite collision and intersecting of polygons and that means some of these are gonna have to get lost and we're gonna have to make it more one and that is the second problem with this Suzanne model for 3d printing so let's bring everything back with alt H and next we have Degenerate. This is looking for deformed geometry on your model. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we have zero. So there are no zero faces and there are no zero edges. So I don't see this one too often. Next we have Distorted. So let's click on Distorted. And notice we have 20 non-flat or distorted faces. Click on that button. There they are. So that is Blender 3D Print Toolbox telling us what is happening. So these are just squares or faces that have just been pushed beyond their means. You know, this one's getting really bent and turned right there. They're just getting turned. So this one, you know, he's stretched pretty far way out here. So we're going to show you how to fix these with just a simple click of a button in just a moment. Next check, we have thickness. So if we click on thickness and notice down here, we have two thin faces. So this is also known as wall thickness. So it's just saying that this eye, this little point right here, also, again, if you hit shift H, it's that's it. It's just this little piece of the eye. And we can alt H to bring it back. Highlight our issues. And sometimes scaling your model up will fix this. Sometimes you may have to redesign or, you know, just make the hallways or pathways a little thicker next is edge sharp and that is similar to thickness or wall thickness but it's really talking about sharpness of like an edge think of like a the sharp end of a blade or a knife or the front of a boat you know that blade if it's too sharp and pointy real world 3d printers may have a problem 3d printing it so it may need to be a little less sharp so let's go ahead and control a to deselect all and the final check is overhang. So if I click on overhang, notice we have 58 overhanging faces. And that just means the 3D printer would need support material to build these steep inclines. Right, Chara. So you could either fix these manually or stay tuned for the next few lessons where I'll teach you how to 3D print this without supports. So let's go ahead and control A to deselect all. And notice down here, we've got a big button that says check it all. So that will check all of these all at once. And this is what I usually do. Check all. And now you've get non-manifold, you know, intersecting faces. 
your deformed faces and your thin faces and your overhanging all at one click of a button. So next we have the cleanup crew. And let's go ahead and select all with A. And let's and this will isolate any edges or points that are just floating out kind of off by themselves, just not really a part of the main mesh. So that will get rid of a lot of those. Another trick you can do is mesh cleanup remove doubles. That will usually help clean up a lot of those stragglers or some that are just kind of in the wrong spot. <laughs> and next is the distorted, but we've already seen distorted before, but this one is the fixer upper. He's the cleanup crew. So well, let's bring up our distorted and those are our non-flat faces here. And then click on our cleanup distorted and watch these triangles here. Boom. It will make them a little make a little bit more sense to a 3D printer. Sometimes it hurts, sometimes it helps. That one looked pretty good, so we'll keep it. And the next button we have is make manifold. This is like the magic button, make manifold. It's like, hey, just just fix it, Blender. It does work really well for simple designs, but if you're trying more complex designs, sometimes it doesn't give you the results that you want. So go ahead and try it if you want. But I'm gonna try and teach you how to not rely on that button and actually fix the designs. Next we have the scale twos. You could scale this to as large as your 3D printer. So you could type in the volume or the, the bounds, which is like the size of your 3D printing bed. So if I click on bounds, let's add 300, which is the size of my print bed and hit okay. And notice we've destroyed their face. <laughs> let's undo that. And that's because we have to select all with A. And now we can scale to the bounds of 300 millimeters. Okay. And now you can see it just popped up and it's huge. It is ginormous. I'm gonna undo that. And so next you have your export path. You'll use this a bunch. So the export path, you can use the scene scale or you know export textures with it. We're not gonna use that today. We're just gonna click on the folder, tell Blender which folder we want these to go into, hit accept, choose the format and hit export. And that will send your design over to your location of choice. It'll also tell you the output, which is what it actually named the 3D print file. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to actually fix this file and get it ready for 3D printing.